All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday weekly workshop. I'm Arthur with Innovative Journaling. And today we're going to start a two-part uh, series on how to make this book and this and mainly the stitch. So we're going to show you how to make it for any size book. And um, yeah, so let's get going on that. Um, I have here, now we have templates already. And here's a small one. And then we got our, well, here we just got four sizes here. And they go Companion, Pathfinder, Soul, which is five and a half by eight and a half. That's the one we're going to make. And then the big Da Vinci sketchbook size. So anyway, let's get going on that. All right. So uh, I'm doing this live today. So if you have any questions, just chime on in. Don't put them in chat. Unmute and speak up. We do record these, but your voice and your face, they're not in the recordings. They're only for us on this on the live on the live part. Okay, so um, basically, once again, let's get this focused here. Okay, um, here's the stitch we're going to be doing. And um, I'm going to show you how to make that. So basically, it's pretty symmetric. And on the bigger one here, let me zoom in. I'll just get the second size down. You can see here that this top part is the same as the bottom part and this middle part is all evenly spaced so it's pretty symmetric uh, you could do it on one you know we just have one long braid that's for a shorter book you can do two of varying size braids this is a shorter braid in here because in the middle here is where the braid goes and then uh, you could also do three now the cool thing about three let me put this up some, is you don't have to make them all equal. Well, you don't ever have to make them all equal. But and we didn't do it on this one, but it's kind of fun. If you have a really tall book, you can make the top and bottom one the same size, and then you can make the middle one a bigger size if you want. So there's all kinds of things you can do on this. We're just going to cover the basic two braids on here like this and that's because this book is going to be five and a half by eight and a half inches and um, that's a popular size and it's also an easy size because you have um, it's it's a half of a size of a piece of notebook paper you know copy paper so we're going to do that and so um, So just keep that in mind. Our sheet size is going to be five and a half by eight and a half. And um, let's see if you can see that on there. I wrote that down over there. Okay, so that's how we're going to be doing this. So first, to get started, um, let's take a book, and we can make this any size. And I'm going to show you how to figure out how to get your put your braid on. So. Here is the, um, I'm trying to figure out if I want to use blue or orange for the book. Let me use blue. And I'll use orange for the center point. So let's say this is the height of our book. Right here. This is the height. Okay? We don't have to worry about the width yet. Um, so then what we're going to do is, however wide this is, um, or you can make it, just just... Imagine a center point on there, and um, what we're going to do is, since this has, see how this has three, three rows in it? Um, each row is, one sec here, oh, yeah, they're a quarter of an inch apart. So what you're going to do is, uh, if you have a specified size, you can find the center point. If not, don't worry about it. Um, so we're going to have our center line, and then one-fourth of an inch to the left is a line, and one-fourth of an inch to the right. 
Okay, so that's our three rows, and they're going to correspond to these three here. Let me move this in a little closer. All right, now, since we're making this five and a half by eight and a half, the eight and a half inch is the height. So for the height, we're going to want to add, uh, let's put over here, add five eighths of an inch to the height of the paper. So if our sheet size is going to be eight and a half high, this is going to be nine and one eighth. Right. And that will accommodate, so it'll be like this. It'll give you a little bit of a, you see that little bit of a border on the book? That's what that'll give you. Okay, now you see how the border is on the right side? We're going to show you how to figure that. Okay, so if our sheet is five and a half inches wide, then we are going to add one half of an inch. So if we have a nine and an eighth inch high cover, you know, if it's if it's eight and a half high for the page for the, for the text block, we're going to have a five and a half plus a half. We're going to have by six inches from here to here. So now how do we figure that? So we know that from the center point of here is six inches. And we're going to do the same on the other side, six inches. So that's 12. And if these are a quarter of an inch each, that's a half an inch. So now we know the width of our cover is 12 and one half. So the whole thing here is 12 and a half inches. Does that make sense? Don't, I can't see the chat, so just unmute and chime in and let me know if you have any questions about that. Because once we get past this, then we're going to get into how to put, how to measure the braids on there, the braid pattern. Nope, we didn't. We never did one inch. That's just that's too much. Five eighths of an inch. So whatever your sheet size is, I mean, if it's a four by six and six high, then your cover is going to be six and five eighths. Unless you want a really big border, big border around it, then you can make it more. But for a standard border, just like we have here, which is like about three sixteenths of an inch, quarter inch, that's what it's going to be. Actually, a little bigger than a quarter, maybe. And to the side, we're adding one half. Now, what does that cover? So we've got our five eighths. I'm sorry. We've got our five and a half inch sheet here. Plus, we're going to have a, when we close, we want to have a border right here. And then there's the bend. On your material so you have to account for that also you see how this right here is a little bit is not exactly like on the edge so right here's a better close-up for you or here if I can get closer even still you see that how this is not right on the edge we're accounting for all that are there any other questions before we move move on So let's say you have like our big one. Take this for example. This is a nine by 11 sheet size. So this, the height will be 11 and 5 eighths high. And the width, since it's nine plus a half. So it'll be nine and a half here, nine and a half from here to here, and then another half an inch in the middle. Cause that's the center point from there, from this hole to this hole. And what you're going to do with that, well, well, I'll tell you what to do with it later when you make your template. But for now, 
uh, you can just cut out a board to the size you need. So in this case, it's 9 and 1 8 by 12 and a half. If you're doing the 5 and a half by 8 and a half size, which we call our sole size. Now, if you're making a paper book cover and you want to have pockets, make this longer. And then when you're done, you can just fold the papers over on the inside and you got pockets. Okay, we're going back to the spine. There's three lines. Each of these blue lines. Yep, that's why we add a half an inch to this right here. But the easiest way to measure it is from the center point of your hole over to the end. Yep. Yeah, the, a little bit extra needed in the spine is included in the half inch. So the question was, this isn't right on the edge here. There's a little bit of space. It, plus, you've got a border when your book is closed. So the half an inch accommodates all that. So the half an inch is a standard no matter what size you have. Just add a half an inch to the width of the paper and that's your cover. And measure from the center from the center point of whatever hole you make or your line here to the end. All right, any other questions? Okay, let's move on. Now, how do we figure out this pattern? So remember I said that um, this is the same as this down here, and this is going to be the same in between the, the braids. And in the center part here is are where the braids go. See? Like that. Okay, so basically what we do, get out your millimeter rulers. We work, I work with millimeters and inches together. It's kind of weird, I guess, but it is what it is. And uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take here, here to here. How's that? Okay. And this is going to be 12 millimeters. Let's see if I can write with my pen on there. 12 millimeters. I don't know if you guys can all see that, but this is... 12 millimeters between the edge of the cover and your first holes. And then you're going to put your holes here, here, and here. Yeah, let's do that. Here, here, and here. And so from there, now you're going to measure out 20 millimeters. So from here to here is 20 millimeters. Okay. Now let's come up from the bottom, do the same thing. Twelve millimeters here and twenty millimeters there. Okay. Uh, next thing you want to do is find the center point of your cover going this way. So let's say that's the center point. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is have, I'll show you how this plays out. Um, the next two holes are going to be here and here. Here, I'm sorry, here and here. And that is 15 millimeters. Now, do you have to stick with these dimensions? Absolutely not. Uh, this is just what, what I have used for like 22 years. But you can make it whatever you want. I'm just showing you. And, and you guys will probably come up with something way more creative than me. <laughs> so anyway, here's the center point. So you want to get 15 millimeters centered on that. So 7.5 millimeters on each side. Then you want to measure up 9 millimeters 
here and nine millimeters here and you're done okay so check it out see this is how that's gonna look um, so here is 12 millimeters 20 millimeters here's the center point so we space these evenly there uh, for 15 millimeters then this is 9 this is 9 here and then below we did the same thing as the top 12 millimeters 20 millimeters and whatever's left over in the middle that's your braid so can you do three braids on here yeah they would be really tiny if you did um, so and notice here if you want to make them all equal when you do a bigger one it's all the same it's it's still the same nine millimeters apart here 15 here nine here it's all the same for for this part any questions on that oh um what what aspect of the middle part are you confused about 12. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. So once you find the center point, then you measure above and below seven and a half millimeters each. So let me see if I can get a close up of that. Here's an old sheet we used for pasting. So we're going to do a big version of that. This is your center point across, you know, uh, horizontally on your book. So you've got, you've got a hole here and a hole here. This is um, 15 millimeters. Then you got one here and you got one here. And these are nine millimeters you know, from this hole, and nine millimeters. And that's how the middle is. See? I mean, this looks, on my screen, my screen's really tiny. And so I can't, I don't know how big your screen is. Um, but that's, that's the, sorry? Right, okay. Good point. So from the middle here, it's seven and a half millimeters up and seven and a half millimeters down for a total of 15. Does that help you, Rachel? Then you go up another nine and down another nine. Down the Um, no, the 20 is not even about this. The 20 millimeters is right here, from here to here, and from here to here. And this is where your braid goes. Yeah, just like that. See? Yep. And that distance is whatever it is. So it floats. If you have a smaller, let's see, where's my smaller? Ah, oh, here it is. If you have a smaller one, like this, you see here? So this is our Pathfinder size. Still has two braids, but do you see how much smaller they are? See, here's for the sole, here's for the Pathfinder. So the braid size floats. This top, this bottom, and this center is constant. Yes, between the 9 and the 20 is the braid, and that is whatever it is. Here's, here's the braid here. However you draw a braid, I don't know. That's the braid right there. And then here's your other holes or things that go in and out right there. Oh, actually, they're, they cross over. We're going to get into this. So to sew this, you need six needles and three threads. And I'm going to sit on my big... Barnes and Noble comfy chair 
put my book between my legs and I'm going to sew it up that way so I can pull the braid tight. And so we're going to do that uh, next week. And I'll make a video ahead of time for it because it can be a little complicated. Um, so, But you all have experience sewing all the other books, right? <laughs> okay, here. Let's um, do this. And... Okay, uh, that was it. So are there any final questions? I'll, I'll post the replay of this as soon as I can. But let me get any of your last questions before I do that. Okay, good. Let me look at chat, see if there's anything in there. Um, Gina, could you post, if you want to know where to get your materials, same place that we do. Gina, could you post that link? Yeah, you're welcome, Robin. Thank you. Let me read this. Oh, that's what Gina just posted. Okay. Yeah, and also, if you want, like, machine sewing on the edges of your thing, or if you're using a fabric uh, cover, and you want a, a serger around there for you, we'll do that for free. Just send it to us. You pay shipping both ways. Oh, yeah, you know what? I don't have any here in front of me. This weekend, we're coming out with our leather pouches. Kits. So you can make leather pouches. Be three sizes right now. Maybe I'll add a fourth one. But um, we're coming out with those this weekend. And I almost have the closures done, the closure product done. And that hopefully will come up before the weekend. Yeah, totally. Yeah, thanks for posting that, Gina. Please feel free to email us if you have any questions, you're working on stuff during the week. Um, we could do that, answer those. Maybe hop on a quick Zoom call or something. All right, everybody. Um, thanks a lot. And I'm going to turn off the recording. Thanks, everybody, for watching.